Hello and welcome to Seville. We've been flown out here to try out this new CRV, which to date has only been available with a 1.5 litre turbo petrol that isn't necessarily suitable to those who do big mileages. The answer, Honda claims, is this hybrid car, which should get much better fuel economy and give you ultra refined EV driving. We're here to find out whether that's true or not and to give you the five key important facts you need to know about this new car. After watching this video, head over to whatcar.com to check out the new car buying section to see what great deals you can get on a CRV or any one of its numerous large SUV rivals. Honda isn't completely green to hybrid systems, having brought one of the first mass-produced hybrid cars to the UK market in 1999. This new system is a little bit different mind and uses three different driving modes in order to maximise fuel economy. These modes are EV drive, hybrid drive and engine drive. To help you understand what's going on, there's this screen in the driver display telling you where the power is coming from at any given moment. In EV mode, the car will use electricity from the battery pack to provide power to the electric motor, which then drives the wheels. But since the range is less than three miles, most of the time it will stay in hybrid drive which uses the engine to provide power to the electric motor that then drives the wheels, while also diverting any excess energy back to the battery pack for use later. At higher speeds, the engine will take over in engine drive mode, which basically means the engine will be used to drive the CRV. If the computer detects that you're cruising at a steady speed and there's enough charge in the battery, it'll switch back to EV drive, which shuts the engine down to help reduce overall fuel consumption. Speaking of fuel economy, Honda quotes a combined NEDC figure of 51.4 mpg for the four-wheel drive model or 53.3 mpg for this two-wheel drive car. We worked out we were getting about 50 mpg overall, which is actually pretty good and goes some way to making up for the loss of the diesel model. There is, of course, a price increase of about £1,000 model for model if you go for this hybrid version over the regular petrol car but considering that this one is actually significantly more economical, you should be able to make up the difference. Thanks to the large exterior dimensions, there's an awful lot of room inside the new CRV. We've got an SR spec car here with the optional silver metallic trim. The interior itself is well laid out and all the buttons controls seem to fall quite easily to hand and have a nice tactile feel to them. But the overall impression is not one of a premium SUV and rivals like the Mazda CX-5 have a much plusher interior. You may also notice we haven't got a traditional gear lever, rather this more futuristic push-button arrangement, which does at least free up a lot of space, but might take a bit of getting used to. From SE spec onwards, you get this 7-inch infotainment system, which does feature Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Unfortunately, it's not the most easy infotainment system to use on the market and can be slow to respond. The CRV Hybrid is only a five-seater, which is similar to that of its closest competitors. This is because the battery pack occupies the space where the six and seven seats would have gone. Mind you, the third row in the standard CRV isn't particularly spacious and you wouldn't be able to fit a small child and their bulky booster seat in there at the same time anyway. So it makes sense to leave it as a spacious five seater with a capacious boot. Seating three here in the rear is actually quite straightforward because there's lots of leg space. The central hump is actually very small and the bench itself is nice and wide. Rivals like the RAV4 Hybrid have a much larger central tunnel which gets in the way. The quoted power figure is 181 bhp, which is a little down on the most potent petrol engine. Fortunately, this hybrid has a bit more torque, so therefore gets off the line with a little bit more authority. Having said that, acceleration does seem to trail off at higher speeds, and if you give the accelerator pedal a bit more than the determined prod, it sends the revs soaring, which does cause a bit of a din. The steering on this hybrid model retains the progressive weighting of the regular petrol car. It is a little bit heavier overall than rivals such as the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace and Skoda Kodiak, but it's by no means difficult at parking speeds. Like most other hybrids, the CRV incorporates regenerative braking which is used to help charge the batteries. Unlike other hybrids though, the pedal travel feels nice and linear and avoids the awkward dead spot that plagues a lot of other systems that makes them feel odd and sometimes a little bit tricky to judge braking distances. Despite Honda including active noise cancellation technology and adding more sound deadening to the CRV hybrid, there's still plenty of road noise at speed and these large door mirrors kick up a bit of wind noise. 
Buyers of large SUVs might be interested to know how much their car can tow. And you'd think with all the additional talk of this CRV hybrid that it should be able to pull quite a lot. Unfortunately, the maximum brake to towing capabilities of both the front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions is only 750 kilograms. In comparison, the Toyota RAV4 hybrid can pull 1650 kilograms, which therefore means that the RAV4 can pull a large caravan, whereas the CLV cannot. On first acquaintance, there's plenty to like about the new CRV hybrid, but to find out how it really competes against its closest rivals, we'll need to get it back to the UK and conduct a group test. To be amongst the first to find out our definitive verdict, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell icon to enable notifications, and as ever, head over to whatcar.com for all the latest news, reviews and new car deals.